Emily Weatherly, and I'm here to introduce my classmate, Mackenzie Lester. Mackenzie has an incredible energy, described accurately by classmate Jessica Joshi as spunky, and as such was a facet of our Latin class for years. However, with all of our time spent together learning the intricacies of the ancient Roman language with Dr. McFadden, her enigmatic and fun friendliness eluded me, and when it came time to write her introduction, I was at a loss for how to sufficiently and accurately describe her. So, naturally, I turned to my AP English class, and according to them, Mackenzie is a loud, funny, Mountain Dew fan who loves her twin siblings, watches baseball religiously, and could probably win a Tony for her notorious King Julian impersonations. And I undoubtedly agree. Now, it's time to hear what this incredible and kind scholar, comedian, sibling, and sports fan has to say to us today, because I'm sure she has something amazing. Friends, Romans, countrymen, put your hands together for Mackenzie Jane Lester. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What is your most important role? What is the activity or endeavor that you are most passionate about? These are the dreaded interview questions that our interviewer will inevitably ask us, whether it is for a college, a job, or any other position. For most people, the answer is student council president, theater lead, or soccer team captain. But mine is that I am a big sister. In her song, Family is Family, country music sensation, Casey Musgrave sings, friends come in handy, but family is family. I cherish and love no friend more than I cherish and love my mom, dad, brother, and sister. Although this has not always been the case. For four months, I lived through sharing a one-bedroom hotel room with my younger twin brother and sister because a 40-foot oak tree fell on my house. For four months, I lived through, I forgot my key in the room. Can you come let me in? For four months, I lived through the burnt smell of Totino's pizza stench permeating our small hotel room. For four months, I lived through Rachel and Ross's love debacle on full volume as I tried to finish my A. Bush TBQ. Conveniently, my parents got the hotel room across the hall. Thus, as the older, wiser, and more responsible sibling, I wielded the power of choosing a bedtime and dispersing room keys. Needless to say, dealing with my siblings and being the authoritative figure took patience. During this time, my parents had the brilliant idea to take us to Chattanooga for my brother's baseball tournament, which is a five-hour Let's Listen to Mom Sing Cindy Lauper ride. <laughs> I actually enjoyed the weekend until the transmission broke in our minivan. If I thought before that nothing could be worse than living in a hotel room with my brother and sister, I soon learned I was mistaken. For an entire week, my family of five shared one queen-size bed and the floor while our car was being fixed. Once the car was fixed, I was ecstatic. Finally, I get to go home to the hotel back in Memphis. It was the end of a difficult road, one might think, but no. The air conditioning in the minivan broke 20 minutes into our drive home. My brother's prepubescent body odor mixed with the July Tennessee heat and my siblings consuming way too many Mountain Dews made the drive back my worst nightmare. Of course, I get mad at my brother when he decides to play Wonderwall by Oasis on the acoustic guitar at 12 at night when I'm trying to sleep, or when my sister hogs the bathroom for an entire 30 minutes just because she thinks the lighting in there is best for her TikToks. However, these are trivial matters. It took me a while to realize, but the unfortunate four months brought my family together in ways that I will forever be grateful for. There is no way I could have remained sane during those events without my brothers constantly making me laugh and finding joy in the smallest situations bringing happiness to our family, my sisters listening to me whenever I needed it and giving me advice on instances that I could not handle alone, and my parents' reassurance of their immense love for us and affirmation that we would be able to weather the storm together and it would make us stronger. Thus, I came to an important realization. No friend could ever be by my side through such difficult obstacles as my family would. So, even though I did have to endure an unfortunate sequence of events, I found that my number one support system will always be my family. 
That being said, maybe your support system isn't your family, but I guarantee you that you do have a support system. Whether it is obvious or not, there is a person or group of people who will unconditionally love and support you. And I urge you to hold on to those people. Because an oak tree just might fall onto your house, metaphorical or in my case, literally. And you will need and appreciate the comfort of those who love you. Whether you want it or not, you will need the support of your people. Because life in general is better living alongside the people you love rather than trying to navigate its challenges alone. To my class of 2021, thank you for being my second family. I would like to leave you with this. Proverbs 31:25 says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. While we may not all know what our days to come will look like, I know that each of you is clothed in strength and dignity and will undoubtedly be able to face anything and everything that comes your way. And I cannot wait to laugh with you and encourage you through your successes in the days to come. Thank you.